Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we're going to be continuing in the Complete Apocrypha, and we are in Jasher, chapter 71. I'm going to read chapter 71 and 72 tonight. And when Moses was 18 years old, he desired to see his father and mother, and he went to them to Goshen. And when Moses had come near Goshen, he came to the place where the children of Israel were engaged in work, and he observed their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian smiting one of his Hebrew brethren. And when the man who was beaten saw Moses, he ran to him for help. For the man, Moses, was greatly respected in the house of Pharaoh. And he said to him, My Lord, attend to me. This Egyptian came to my house in the night bound me and came to my wife in my presence, and now he seeks to take my life away. And when Moses heard this wicked thing, his anger was kindled against the Egyptian. And he turned this way and the other, and when he saw there was no man there, he smote the Egyptian and hid him in the sand, and delivered the Hebrew from the hand of him that smote him. And the Hebrew went to his house, and Moses returned to his home and went out and came back to the king's house. And when the man had returned home, he thought of repudiating his wife, for it was not right in the house of Jacob for any man to come to his wife after she had been defiled. And the woman went and told her brothers, and the woman's brothers sought to slay him. And he fled to his house and escaped. And on the second day Moses went out to his brethren and saw, and behold, two men were quarreling. And he said to the wicked one, Why do you smite your neighbor? And he answered and said to him, Who has set you for a prince and judge over us? Do you think to slay me as you did the Egyptian? And Moses was afraid and said, Surely the thing is known. And Pharaoh heard of this affair, and he ordered Moses to be slain. So God sent his angel, and he appeared unto Pharaoh, in the likeness of a captain of the guard. And the angel of the Lord took the sword from the hand of the captain of the guard and took his head off with it. For it was for the likeness of the captain of the guard was turned into the likeness of Moses. And the angel of the Lord took hold of the right hand of Moses and brought him out from Egypt and placed him from without the borders of Egypt, a distance of 40 days journey. And Aaron, his brother alone, remained in the land of Egypt. And he prophesied to the children of Israel, saying, Thus says the Lord God of your ancestors, Throw away each man the abomination of his eyes, and do not defile yourselves with idols of Egypt. And the children of Israel rebelled and would not hearken to Aaron at that time. And the Lord thought to destroy them, were it not, that the Lord remembered the covenant that he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In those days the hand of Pharaoh continued to be severe against the children of Israel, and he crushed and oppressed them until the time when God sent out his word and took notice of them. Chapter 72 And it was in those days that there was a great war between the children of Cush and the children of the east and Aram. And they rebelled against the king of Cush, in whose hands they were. So Cacianus, king of Cush, went out with all the children of Cush, a people numerous as the sand, and he went to fight against Aram and the children of the east, and to bring them under subjection. And when Cacianus went out, he left Belaam, the magician, with his two sons to guard the city and the lowest sort of the people of the land. So Cacianus went out to Aram, and the children of the east, and he fought against them and smote them, and they all fell down wounded before Cacianus and his people. And he took many of them captives, and he brought them under subjection as at first, and he encamped upon their land to take tribute from them as usual. And Balaam, the son of Beor, when the king of Cush had left him to guard the city and the poor of the city, he rose up and advised with the people 
of the land to rebel against Cacaianus, not to let him enter the city when he should come home. And the people of the land hearkened to him, and they swore to him, and made him king over them, and his two sons for captains of the army. So they rose up and raised the walls of the city at the two corners, and they built an exceeding strong building. And at the third corner they dug ditches without number, between the city and the river which surrounded the whole land of Cush. And they made the waters of the river burst out there. At the fourth corner they collected numerous serpents by their enchantations and enchantments, and they fortified the city and dwelt therein. And no one went out or in before them. And Cacaianus fought against Aram and the children of the east, and he subdued them as before. And they gave him their usual tribute, and he went and returned to his land. And when Cacaianus, the king of Cush, approached his city, and all the captains of the forces with him, they lifted up their eyes and saw the walls of the city were built up and greatly elevated. So the men were astonished at this, and they said one to another, It is because they saw that we were delayed in battle and were greatly afraid of us. And therefore they have done this thing and raised the city walls and fortified them, so that the kings of Canaan might not come in battle against them. So the king and the troops approached the city door, and they looked up, and behold, all the gates of the city were closed, and they called out to the sentinels, say, saying, Open unto us, that we may enter the city. But the sentinels refused to open to them by the order of Baalim, the magician, their king. They suffered them not to enter their city. So they raised a battle with them opposite the city gate, and one hundred and thirty men of the army of Cacaianus fell that on that day. And the next day they continued to fight, and they fought at the side of the river. They endeavored to pass, but were not able. So some of them sank in the pits and died. So the king ordered them to cut down trees to make rafts, upon which they might pass to, to them, and they did so. And when they came to the place of the ditches, the waters revolved by mills, and two hundred men upon rafts were drowned. And on the third day they came to fight at the site where the serpents were, and they could not approach there, for the serpents slew of them one hundred and seventy men, and they ceased fighting against Cush, and, be and they besieged Cush for nine years. No person came out or in. At that time the war and the siege were against Cush. Moses fled from Egypt from Pharaoh, who sought to kill him for having slain the Egyptian. And Moses was eighteen years old when he fled from Egypt from the presence of Pharaoh. And he fled and escaped to the camp of Cacaianus, which at that time was besieging Cush. And Moses was nine years in the camp of Cacaianus, king of Cush, all the time that they were besieging Cush. And Moses went and came in with them. And the king and the princes and all the fighting men loved Moses, for he was great and worthy. His stature was like a noble lion, his face was like the sun, and his strength was like that of a lion, and he was counselor to the king. And at the end of nine years, Cacaianus was seized with a mortal disease, and his illness prevailed over him, and he died on the seventieth day. So his servants embalmed him and carried him, and buried him op opposite the city gate to the north of the land of Egypt. And they built over him an elegant, strong, and high building, and they placed great stones below. And the king's scribes engraved upon those stones all the might of their king Cacaianus, and all his battles which he had fought. Behold, they are written there at this day. Now after the death of Cacaianus, king of Cush, it grieved his men and his troops greatly on account of the war. So they said one to another, Give us counsel. What are we to do at this time, as we have resided in the wilderness nine years away from our homes? If we say we will fight against the city, many of us will fall wounded or killed. And if we remain here, the siege we will also die. For now the kings of Aram and the children of the east 
will hear that our king is dead, and they will attack us suddenly in a hostile manner. And they will fight against us and leave no remnant of us. Now therefore, let us go and make a king over us, and let us remain in the siege until the city is delivered up to us. And they wish to choose, and they wish to choose on that day a man for king from the army of Caiaphas, and they found no subject, no object of their choice like Moses to reign over them. And they hastened and stripped off each man his garments and cast them upon the ground, and they made a great heat and placed Moses thereon. And they rose up and blew with trumpets and called out before him and said. May the king live, may the king live. And all the people and nobles swore unto him to give for him for a wife Adonia, the queen, the Cushite, wife of Cacianus. And they made Moses king over them on that day. And all the people of Cush issued a proclamation on that day, saying, Every man must give something to Moses of what is in his possession. And they spread out a sheet upon the heap and every man cast into it something of what he had, one a gold earring and the other a coin, also of onyx stones, bedellium, pearls, and marble, did the children of Cush cast unto Mo Moses upon the heap, also silver and gold in great abundance. And Moses took all of the silver and gold, all the vessels and the bedellium and onyx stones, which all the children of Cush had given to him, and he placed them among his treasures. And Moses reigned over the children of Cush on that day, in the place of Gachiachus, king of Cush. Cool story, huh? And in the last chapter, chapter 70, we found out why it was that Moses had trouble speaking. It was because the angel came to save his life, but he took the coal and pressed it into Moses' mouth. And so I'm guessing that's why Moses had trouble speaking. But, and as always, <laughs> I love you.